As leaders, it begins with us. And most often, we jump straight to action. We hire a diversity dean. We implement implicit bias training. However, structural racism cannot be addressed by a person or by education. It requires structural or systems level change. We've been engaged in a multi-year journey of personal and professional development around issues of racism. We've learned about unconscious and conscious bias. We've learned about restorative justice and have implemented its practices in the school. We've also learned about health inequities, and we've also learned about the history of racism in the communities where we work and, and live. What are some of the concrete actions to address structural racism at the institutional level? Here are a few ideas. One, as a leader, be vocal about your commitment to fighting structural racism. Do not use a proxy to deliver this message. Each of your constituents needs to hear this directly from you. You must also empower members of the leadership to be on, vigilant on your behalf and bring issues to your attention immediately. This must be a team effort. Two, there has to be a zero tolerance policy against racism. Schools should create mechanisms for reporting racially motivated or racially biased incidents and traumas, as well as clearly outline the consequences for the offenders. Three, there must be resources in the form of personnel and funding to support efforts at addressing structural racism. If you don't have a designated leader in this area, you need to hire or appoint one, and this person must report directly to the dean or director. This sends a message about the importance of the work to the school. The effort required to address this issue deserves the same level of prioritization, attention and resources we devote to our research endeavors, our licensure rates, enrollment numbers, and teaching excellence. We developed an ongoing action plan for change with the assistance and review of faculty, staff, and most importantly, our students. Our commitment to action includes providing mandatory foundational learning opportunities for faculty and staff of the School of Nursing grounded in racial and social justice to create an anti-racist culture of equity and inclusivity, committing to recruiting and retention of Black, Indigenous, people of color, and other historically underrepresented and first-generation students, faculty, and staff, and organizing and advocating at the state and national levels to address systems of structural racism, including admission standards and first-time NCLEX pass rates. We've implemented several changes, such as employing a holistic admissions approach that utilizes more than just a student's GPA, but considers the student's entire experiences. In our PhD program, we've eliminated the use of the GRE that could serve as a barrier for some students to gain admission to a preeminent research university. We offer several courses for our undergraduate and graduate level students that address a variety of global and cultural systems, cultural relationships, and complex global issues. These courses equip our students with the knowledge to speak to and act for diversity, equity, and inclusive excellence, both locally and abroad. We are looking at our curriculum. We definitely want to make sure that we identify whether or not we have biases within our curriculum. We want to make sure we have enough things in our curriculum that actually educate our students around uh, the things um, that they should be knowing about, about health disparities and about uh, actually just the history around race within our country. A diversity and inclusion council has been been developed that includes faculty from undergraduate, graduate, and doctoral programs. The Council has two primary focus areas that includes increasing the population of diverse students and creating an environment that is welcoming and respective to diverse populations and supports their retention and success. The Council is working towards these goals by increasing the community engagement in the area with high school students and providing faculty CEU series and presentations. We look at our faculty. Does our faculty match with local demographics? Does it match with our student demographics? If our faculty isn't diverse, are we able to recruit a diverse faculty? What are the barriers? What's stopping this? More importantly also, are we able to retain our diverse faculty? Do we have a history of success with the promotion and success of diverse faculty? 
If not, where are those barriers? What are those issues? To support the development of scientists from underrepresented populations, we have funded two diversity postdoctoral fellow positions. Our faculty have begun to evaluate the inclusion of disparities and equity within the nursing curriculum. The Diversity Advisory Council was appointed in January 2020. That includes faculty from each of our campuses to guide and advise our diversity efforts and evaluation. One of the ways Decker College is working to foster an inclusive environment is by establishing our own Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, which works in concert with Binghamton University's Division of DEI. This summer, just after the deaths of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, Decker's Director of DEI, Dr. Sharon Bryant, launched a Holding Space Initiative, a virtual space where students from across the university could connect with her and others to share their feelings and be heard. I believe we have to intentionally listen to our students and faculty of color, our men in nursing, those who look or act differently than us. When we're open to that dialogue, then we're open also to change from what we've heard and we can, we can affect the system, the structure, and, and help combat racism. Here at Olivet, we've had listening sessions. We have a diversity and inclusion committee made up of volunteer faculty, staff, and leaders. And we've addressed this in each of our programs uh, where we invite students and faculty to come. We, we talk about relevant topics and articles. We ask questions and most of all, we listen. We've had multiple sessions already and hope to have a few virtual events in the future where we actually celebrate our differences. Let's talk about our culture, our food, music, common practices with birthdays or weddings or funerals. Having the tough conversations around the social determinants of health and embedding those in our clinical care, in our analysis of research questions, and in our leadership strategies is vital. This journey begins with us.